it is very, very cold outside. We normally don't get this kind of temperatures here in Mexico, so it's definitely cold. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we're not going to have a video today because we are going to be going over one of the very requested topics, which is Marmoset Bakes. So let's go. Now, today we're going to do it in Blender because I know a lot of people argue that Blender is better, Maya is the worst. You guys know I don't have a specific site. I like using both and you can do exactly the same, especially for this kind of facets in any of the softwares. So this right here is the high poly that we sculpted a couple of weeks ago. You can find the live stream or the video rerun in the channel, of course. And um, I have went on and created the low poly. This is going to be for the environment course that I'm working on. And there's a lot of facets that I'm not recording for the actual course because otherwise it would be like a hundred hour course. And um, yeah, I was not intending to show this specific part of the process, but since you guys asked for it very nicely on the last live stream, well, we're going to do it. So the first thing you need to do when you are doing this kind of like bakes is to make sure that you have a low poly representation of your high poly assets, which is this one right here. As you can see, this is very, very or relatively low poly. Let me turn on wire from here. And even though it's not like the most efficient one, like we could definitely optimize this a little bit more, especially for the kind of like feel that I'm going in the environment course. I want to have a little bit of a higher density, right? So we have the wooden beams, we have the support right here, the ropes, the little hook there on the bell, the bell itself, and the little thing here that rings the bell. As you can see here on the inside, I did use a little bit of tricks to optimize the inside a little bit more because this is an area that we're not going to be seeing as much. So this are like triangulation where we go from three elements to just one or from two edges to just one and simplify. It's a very good way to minimize the amount of triangles that you have, again, especially on areas that you don't usually uh, need. Of course, once you have this, you also need to have a good UV setup right here. So this is the UV setup right here. These are the main belts. Everything's scaled up like properly. And we're trying to approach a nice textile density so that we can get a very nice bake. I am going to be baking this at 4K. It's a big bell. It's supposed to be like two meters tall or something like that. So remember that the bigger the object that we have on a game or on any sort of like production, the more textile density you will need in order to have a nice resolution, right? If it was a small little bell that we had like on a desk or something, a 512 by 512 UV map will be more than enough. In this particular case, we're going to be using a 4K map. Now, as you can see here on the outliner, what I have is, of course, the high poly is exactly on top of the low poly. And for every single object that says or that has a high poly, there's going to be one that says low poly. And I am using this suffix right here, which is the underscore high and underscore low suffix. I have two groups and everything is pretty much ready. One more important thing is that this bell group low right here, all of the assets on the low poly have the exact same like material, okay? This one have the exact same material. It's called, uh, in this case, Maya Lambert 2, because I actually did this on Maya, but uh, it's just one material for all of them. Otherwise, you're gonna get multiple texture sets and we don't want that. So once this is ready, and this is the, one of the very cool things about Marmoset, is that you can actually grab both elements, both the high group and the low group, along as with all of the elements inside the groups, right? So all of the elements and export it as a single file. In Substance Painter, normally you export the low poly and you export the high poly. For Marmoset, well, Marmoset, this is smart enough that it knows which one is the low poly and which one is the high poly. So let's jump to Marmoset. Very well. So we're now here inside of Marmoset. I'm going to go to the options right here to the scene. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bake project. It's this little button right here. By doing that, we're going to create this bake project. We can rename it if you want, because you can actually have multiple um, like bake projects on the same Marmoset file, which is pretty, pretty cool. Like, let's imagine we're doing the bell and a wall and some rocks or whatever. All of them could be in the exact same file and it's going to work perfectly fine. And this thing is going to create three elements. It's going to create the bake groups right here. And here we're going to have the high poly folder and the low poly folder. The low poly stuff is what we're going to be using to calibrate the cages that we're going to be using for the bakes. So I'm going to go to Bell Bakes. And I'm going to use the Quick Loader, which is an amazing, amazing thing right here, because we could just go to the Quick Loader, load the Bell file real quick. Let me go to the assets here. Bell, there we go. It's this one. And I'm going to hit Open. And again, automatically, thanks to the naming convention that we have, the like the proper naming convention, all of the groups are going to be replaced here with the respective elements. So for instance, here we have the bell loop with its high and low. Here we have the beam support with its high and low, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, the bell over here. And once we have this, we are actually almost ready to start. There's a couple of things that we need to set up before we can see what the bakes are doing. First things first, here on the properties, and actually let me let me drag this thing right here. 
I normally work with this on the other side, but then my, my face is going to be uh, sort of like covering it. So here on this side, I need to change a couple of elements on the properties of the base. We're going to change the size. We're going to go for 4K resolution, and we need to select where we want to export these elements. So I'm going to create a new folder here. Let's call this bakes. There we go. And we're going to call them something. So in this case, I'm going to call them bell underscore uh, bakes underscore. Okay, that way we know which one it is. I'm gonna set this to JPEG. Normally I do PSD or target because they have better quality. I'm gonna set this to JPEG so that we can see them on the Explorer on, on Windows. I'm gonna hit save. And there we go. That's gonna give me a 4K map right there that we're gonna be able to export from this element. Now down here, you can see the maps that we're actually baking right now. And right now we're only baking the normal map. So I'm just gonna say start. You're gonna see a little progress bar down here. Boom, the bake is done. But we're not saying anything because we need to select this thing and say preview material. It will create a new material right here and it will allow us to preview how this thing looks. I'm going to go to the material and on the Alvedo color, I'm going to go for more of a neutral gray element. And the, on the roughness, I'm going to increase it. Uh, something like that. That way we can see more of a, of a Lambert effect. Now, one cool thing about the Marmoset is that you can actually like start setting up your, your light scene scenario right here. So for instance, I'm going to add a little bit of a light right there. Let's make the diameter a little bit bigger so the shadows are a little bit softer. I always like to use a little bit of temperature there just so that it's not like super boring. And then let's go to the other side, add another light right here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And we're going to increase the brightness there. Again, a little bit of a spot angle. It's going to be like my rim light. And this one's going to be a little bit cooler. There we go. So now it should be a lot easier to, to see how the bakes are actually affecting our element. Now I can already see a couple of issues. For instance, here on the bell, some of the elements right here, there might be a couple of things that we want to fix. Uh, the wood might also have some issues. And this is one of the amazing things about Marmoset. You can actually modify the cage of each individual asset. As long as they're separated into multiple assets, you can go, for instance, to the bell right here, go to the low poly, and look at that. That's the cage that we're using for the low poly. And what we can do is we can affect the max offset right here like just changes and make sure that it captures every single detail or you could even go to paint offset and paint specific parts of the mesh either in or out for instance right there i'm painting it in and uh, that's pushing the cage in that's not exactly what i want or i could push it to the other side right like if i change the value here to a white value i can push this out and we're going to push the cage out so that we can capture the values properly if you've ever done like complex bakes for a character or like an asset that has like very small little pieces and things are so like inch or overlapping or generating a weird effect or artifacts. This tool right here, the paint offset, paint skew, and min and max offset per object is amazing. Substance doesn't have that. I wish they had because Substance, you can just control the global sort of like extrusion of the cage, which for most of the stuff might be fine, but for some specific elements, you might want to like uh, work a little bit better. Like this one right here, look at this. We have the little bell loop right there. So I'm going to go to the bell loop, go to the low poly. And if I, again, start increasing the max offset, I'm going to be able to capture those little details that we were missing. So very, very important fact that with the normal map, we can change the cage to generate a better result. Now that we have that, we can go back to the uh, bakes right here to the bake project and we can add more maps to to include into our bakes. The most common ones are normal uh, normal maps or uh, world space normals, as we normally call them. We got the curvature map, which we use for things like metal edgeware and um, Cavity maps. If you haven't seen this, by the way, I did a video, I think it was last week or the week previous to this, where I have, there's like thumbnail with masks and the, like a, a literal mask, not a, not a Photoshop mask. And, um, and in that one, I explained the different types of uh, like uh, mesh maps that we need. So ambient occlusion, of course, and then normally if we go here to presets, or sorry, to configure, we have so many more. This is why Marmoset definitely has the upper hand in terms of baking compared to other softwares, which is the fact that it has so many other things that we can do. Position is another one that we normally uh, do. We can do like a thickness map, for instance, as well, which is going to be a little bit more slow. There are some maps that are a little bit slower than others, but they're going to allow us to get a very, very nice result. There's some lightning maps that we can do, so we're not really going to use them right now. There's some ID masks that we can do. So I'm going to use this one, for instance, the object ID. Very, very important. You're going to see why in just a second. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. We can bake transparency. We can make bake metalness. Remember that all of this information is coming from the high poly. So your high poly has to have this information in order for it to be baked down into the low poly. 
But here, yeah, you just select all of the different maps that you want to utilize or that you want to bake from your element. And once you're happy, you just go over here and say preview material again. So that it loads all of the materials. It will only load the normal map and some of the other ones. For instance, the ambient occlusion here is being loaded as the as the ambient occlusion map of the of the object. But uh, the other ones we're just gonna be we're just gonna bake them because we're gonna use them or we could eventually use them for the texturing process of the element. Now, there's a very important thing that I want to talk about here, which is mesh exclusion. So right now, if we were to go here to where the ropes are, actually, I believe I can turn them off. There we go, bell ropes, there we go. Let's turn them off for just a second. You can see that there is a little bit of informa information being baked down into the wood. You might want this for certain elements and you might not want this for other elements. So if you don't want a specific object to be affecting other objects, both in the normal map, ambient occlusion, and all of the other maps, what you need to do here is you need to go to the bell low right here to the option or to the object and use this option that says exclude when ignoring groups. If we do that, the bakes are going to happen again. And now that particular element, that particular object will not be taken into consideration when you're doing the bakes of ambient occlusion a normal map and all those things. So let's just wait for this bake real quick. And now, as you can see, the ropes are not being baked into the wood. So this allows me to play around with which parts I want to exclude and which parts I don't want to exclude from the whole bake, which again is so, so powerful. You guys, if this is the first time you're learning about bakes, you guys have no idea how powerful this is because on characters where you have bracers and belts and buckles and coins and, I don't know, earrings, necklaces, uh, pieces of armor, it's it's very, very useful to be able to decide, I do want this object to contribute to the whole ambient occlusion and normal information, or I want to exclude this object from that contribution. Again, in other softwares, it's usually a global toggle where either everything bakes into each other or every single object bakes on itself. This one right here, again, chef's kiss to that like programming decision that the guys at Marmoset did because it's just an amazing and amazing way to to solve that issue now this thing's right here very common baking issues that's usually the cage so again i'm gonna go here to the um, uh that's the beam no that's the what is it the wood beams right here and i might need to go to the low poly here and just increase the max offset a little bit there we go see that so once I do that, it immediately gets solved. Any like weird bakes that we might have are now uh, like corrected. And again, thanks to the fact that this is per object, it's very, very easy to fix. Same for this one. Look at this cylinders right here. These are the beam supports that we have right here. I believe it's this one right here, low poly, there we go. So right now, this one might be a little bit too much. So I'm gonna bring it in. I really don't think I need to bring it too much. I can show the skew. That's the normal map information right there. And it can allow us to see how these things are baking. Here's where we can paint the skew, for instance, and fix a couple of this elements right here. Oh, let's go with black value. And by doing this, as you can see, I'm correcting the normal map direction of the faces. And that should allow me to fix a little bit of the direction of the bakes. I think uh, what we're seeing is also a little bit of the shadows from the from the light. But look at that, like being able to go in here and use the skew option to change the direction of the normal maps, like the direction that the normal maps are facing to better like capture the information of the element. This is really good control of the bakes. And again, you will be using this, especially with very sort of like hard surface assets. This is an ex excellent, excellent tool to add to your, to your baking arsenal. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Once you have all of this, once you have done uh, the, the whole like preparation and all of your bakes are looking exactly the way you want, now you're ready to go on to the next stage, which is of course texturing. If you're gonna be texturing this in a different software, then what you will need are these bakes right here, which as you can see, contain all of the information that we normally see on our maps, right? We have our normal, uh, this is the normal map that we had that carries all the detail, the normal object, which tells us where the direction of the faces are like pointing to, ambient occlusion, curvature for metal edge we're under, uh, object ID. So every object, every low poly that we have has its own ID, as you can see right here, actually every high poly that we have as a group has its own ID. So we can quickly select the belt or the ropes or the wood, bake position so that we know what part is higher up or lower down so that we can again add specific generators and of course the thickness in case we want to add a little bit of like subsurface effect or something to some of the elements right again you can bake more stuff if you're going to continue your work here inside of marmoset you can go back here to the bell bakes object and go to the texture project link right here and you can add a new project 
And by adding a new project, you're going to create a new paint project, which is a different thing than a, than a bake project. It's this one right here. And if we go to the texturing tab inside of Marmoset, we're going to have a very similar like uh, element as what we normally do inside of um, Substance. So I'm going to go for a bronze material here, for instance, and let's download, I don't know, this one right here. And it's going to paint the whole thing. Then what we can do is we can add, for instance, a black mask. And we're going to add a color selection processor here that we can use to add a specific color. Once we do that, we can add all of the different objects that make up the, the element. We can add multiple objects, of course, add new, oh, there we go. And we're gonna be able to start the texturing process for our object, right? Now, that's one thing that I really like about Marmoset is that if you already have a nice like light setup enabled, you can texture in real time. You can actually, I believe you can texture even with like, um, with freaking ray tracing enabled. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit slow, right? Like the screen is gonna try to recapture all of the information, but you're gonna be able to like work perfectly normally as you would in any other texturing software. You have the same sort of generators and stuff like that. We will talk about more tech uh, about texturing instead of Marmoset, uh, but for now, I just wanted to focus on the baking aspects or the baking elements here inside of the software. So next time you have a project or a little asset that you're working on and you wanna consider doing bakes inside of Marmoset, hopefully you can use this video. Now, before we leave guys, I, I normally don't ask this, but we've been like looking at some of the information here on the channel. It would be great if you found this video useful and you're not subscribed. It really helps the project. It really helps the channel. It really helps us get to more people and so that more people can learn about 3D and make amazing things. So if you're not subscribed, please consider doing that. It would really help us. I would really appreciate it. Uh, likes, shares, comments, all that kind of stuff also helps. But most importantly, make sure to like save this video so that you, if you have any more questions about baking, uh, you can come back to it and review all of the options. Now, if there's a specific thing that I missed about baking that you want me to talk about baking, of course, let me know here in the comments and I'll be happy to check that as well. Thank you very much, my friends. And don't forget, always learning, always improving. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.